Daniel, you're acting weird. Why are you refusing it so much? It's not like I'm refusing it. I'm just saying there's no meaning. No meaning? Why? Because, you know, you can't go sightseeing here. You're just going to look into my room and see how messy it is. Or look in my fridge and see what I'm eating. And check everything, right? You don't have time to do touristy things like eating local food or seeing the famous tower. I'm sure that's how it's going to be. I'll just end up cleaning your room, doing laundry and cooking. At best, I'll go shopping for dinner. I could at least stock the fridge. See? You're going to waste money on transportation to come here to do that. I'm making a good living in my own way. Don't worry. I'm an adult too, you know. But if I go from Friday night, I can get all that stuff taken care of on Saturday. Then on Sunday, we can walk around the town and go home at night. I'd love to do something date-like once in a while. You'd have a hard time if we had a busy weekend like that. It's not like you have nothing to do. I'm thinking about you. Thanks for your concern, but it's not like I visit you every week, so it's not tough for me. Yes, it is. Of course it's tough. If you go to work on Monday in that condition, I'm sure you'll make a mistake. And if you do, you'll cause trouble for everyone around you. I don't want you to make a mistake at work and get fired or have your salary lowered. I don't want you to have to go through that. It's for your own good. You're even thinking about that? So, does that mean it's too hard for you to come over here? No, no, that's a different story. I deserve to have a hard time, and I'm relieved to be home. I can relax. And I get to do nothing on the weekends. I get to restore my energy. It's advantageous for me. It's not the same as when you come over here. Is that so? Something's weird. There's nothing strange about it. It's natural. There's a big difference between going back to our sweet home and being at a place where I'm working alone. This is a temporary home. But this home is a rent too. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about renting or owning a house. It's our home, a place for both of us, a place to go home. But here is a temporary place, so I don't feel at home. Hmm, I feel like I understand, but not really. Is that okay? Of course, it's fine. Anyway, you prefer to come back home? Then I go visit you even if it costs money. That's what I mean. Besides, I heard from my colleague that if we work far from home and when we want to go back to our home, the transportation fee will be deductible as long as we file a tax return. So it's definitely a better deal, right? I didn't know that. Well then, it's better for you to come back. I mean, if you had said that from the beginning, I would have been convinced right away. Why have you been telling me all those weird logic or reason? I thought you knew too. It's not weird at all to me. Well, I don't know, but I get it. What's that? Which is it? I don't understand you. I don't know what you're thinking, but... I understand that it's not strange to you. I don't understand completely, but if you insist, I won't ask you anymore. I'm glad you understand. This is definitely the best way. I've told you many times that I'd visit you, but every time you always have some weird reason or logic and refuse me. I've been a little worried about it. I wondered why you were so reluctant. Isn't that kind of weird? I was actually a little worried that you might have a girlfriend there. 
If you have a reason for wanting to use your deductible for transportation, that makes sense. You should have told me earlier. Wait a minute. You suspected me of cheating on you? That's stupid. There's no way I would do something like that. Right. You were thinking about the family. I'm sorry I suspected you for even a second. There's no need to apologize. If you understand, that's fine. Don't worry about that kind of thing anymore. Yeah, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you when you get back. Me too. Well, good night. Now one problem is solved, but another one came up. Before Daniel went off to work away from home, we were considering buying an apartment. But since he left, we haven't talked about it at all. I wanted to discuss what we should do, so I asked him about it, but it turned into a fight. Daniel, do you have any idea which place you want to live? I'm asking this because I wanted to get ready to buy an apartment. I wanted to decide on our place to live. That's not something you should be asking me when I'm working away from home. Why do you always get so ahead of yourself? Why don't we look for a place together when I get back? But then, I'll have to wait for another year? Until you finish your work there? I'm not even allowed to talk about it. You could at least tell me where you want to live. I didn't say like that. This assignment was originally supposed to be for three years. But there's a chance to be extended, depending on how things go at work. I can't decide to buy an apartment when I don't know what's going to happen. I'm worried too, you know. But even if we can't decide now, why don't we start thinking about it? At least, decide where we're going to live. Then, when you finish working there, we can make a move right away. I'm not talking about buying it right now. I just want to discuss about it. Is that a no too? No, I don't know when I finish. You don't know what the real estate status will be at that time. There is a possibility that land price in the city you want to live in might go up drastically. That's a waste of money. If that's the case, it's better not to make such a decision in the first place. First of all, we have to think about whether it's better to rent or own a house. Wait, what do you mean? Before you left, you said you wanted an apartment too, right? Did you change your mind? It's going to be our property. It's not like I changed my mind. I mean, I'm put off by your enthusiasm for buying an apartment. I was thinking that we don't have to rush. Why do you say that? Because if we are thinking of buying an apartment, we don't necessarily have to get it. At the very least, we need to gather information and save up some money. I think it's too late to start when you suddenly want it. We need a plan when we think about the finance, right? You know what? You're always so forward with your life planning, and I'm always being pushed around. That's what I don't like. I don't feel good, you know. What? I didn't mean it like that. Did I really push you around that much? You're always like that. You've been pushing me around like you're doing right now. You're always taking things in the direction you want them to go. That's selfish, isn't it? No, I'm not. I'm thinking about us. I always want to be happy together with you, Daniel. You didn't come along with me to this town. And you're trying to go ahead with your plan to buy an apartment just because you want one. Isn't that awful? Maybe you make more money than me. And you might think it's stupid plan to quit your job and follow me. 
Then why don't you give something else up for me? How terrible! Is that how you thought? I don't know how to say, but I feel like you don't respect me. That's not true. But if you felt so, I must have done something wrong in the way I tell you or the way I talk to you. I'm sorry. You're not that enthusiastic about buying an apartment, right? I'm sorry for trying to force you to go through with it. Before I get into it or not, you're too forward. That's what I don't like about. It's not just about the apartment. You want to take over the conversation, right? You think I'm mad because of a childish reason like that? You've got to be kidding me. You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, I'm sorry. I don't understand why you're mad. Why is it? I didn't say anything difficult, did I? I'm saying you shouldn't proceed on your own. When you decide on something or do something, you have to hear my opinion and feelings before taking action. Why do I have to tell you? Understood. I'll do that from next time. After this message, he started to take over the conversation and his male, chauvinistic comments began to stand out. I had a bad feeling about this because he had been so nice to me, but he suddenly changed. It was clearly someone else's effect, and if it had been a woman, I could see a trouble coming up. I was thinking about it all by myself, but it was a few months later that my bad premonition came true. I'm sorry, I haven't been able to spend time with you. I'll be home early next Friday, so let's go eat out. The restaurant you mentioned the other day sounds good. Let's go there. Kate, what's wrong? Nothing. You just sent to the wrong person. What's going on? No, it's not what you think. Don't get it wrong. She's my colleague at work, Kate. We were planning to go out for dinner since it was a tough week. There's nothing personal. Will you understand? But last time, you said that your colleague are all men. It's different from what you said. Besides, would you say, I can be home early when you ask a woman out to dinner? You know, you only notice what I don't want you to notice. Stop using your annoying skills. I told you not to worry. You were cheating on me. That's why you didn't want me there. So that's what was happening. Now it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Bingo. I was cheating on you. I'm working my ass off too. Is there a problem? Unlike you, Kate is a super nice girl who stands up for me. She's not selfish. She puts me first in everything she does. She listens to me when I tell her how hard I'm working. Unlike you, she's not condescending. She cooks and takes care of the house. When have I ever been condescending? I never say something like that. I mean, when did I say? I can tell by your attitude. The attitude. I work too, but I'm doing all this housework-ish attitude. You should notice that. That's not true. It's not right for you to say that. When I came home tired, I often didn't cook, did I? Remember when I said, sorry, I bought some food today? I never did something condescending, did I? 
Really? Well, I felt so. You were giving me a bad vibe. Maybe that girl Kay told you something about me. She kept telling you bad things about working wives and you believed her. You're so naive. You've got to be kidding me. Kate is not that kind of woman. She works to support her sick parents and earn money for her brother's tuition. There aren't any girls like that nowadays. Daniel, do you believe that? Of course I do. And like you, she doesn't work just for herself. She's a good girl, isn't she? I'm not just working for me. I'm working for both of us. I don't know if I can believe that. You can't believe me, but you can believe this girl? I think it's very suspicious. But I did my best to save up the down payment for our future apartment. You didn't put any money in our shared savings account, though. I never once urged you to save money either, did I? I have put in at least $2,000 in savings. Are you making fun of me? That's enough. I can't talk to you. I hate your attitude, so it's only natural that I cheat on you. We're getting divorced. I'll take half of your property. $150,000. Understood? Give me a break. The next week, I received a response regarding the divorce, so I turned it in. It all happened so suddenly. I didn't really feel the end, but being mentioned by my parents and friends, I could finally feel the sadness and loss. I moved out of my room and went to live near my work. One day, I received a message from Daniel. Hey, answer the phone. Are you kidding me? What is that $2,000 you transferred? We had a shared bank account for the apartment purchase, right? I returned the money you transferred into that account. You put $2,000, right? $2,000 is not enough. I told you I'd get $150,000 for the half of the savings and property division, right? I know you had a fund of $300,000 to buy an apartment. Now that we're divorced, we have to split it 50-50 as property division. So transfer the $150,000 to me. Aren't you misunderstanding? I don't have any money to give you. You can't play dumb with me. The money you saved when we were married is ours. So even if you saved it yourself, you have to share it with me. You can't pocket the money. Huh? You don't know anything? What? Well, $200,000 is the one I saved when I was single. And my parents gave me $20,000 four times a year, so that makes $80,000. The remaining $20,000 is what I saved after we got married. So, the only joint property is the last $20,000. And the other $280,000? The property before marriage and the property that was given as a gift are called separate estate. They're not subject to property division. That's a lie. That's not what I heard. What are you talking about? It's money I worked so hard to save. Do you have any idea how much I studied investing? I don't know what Kate told you about me. But what I just said is not a lie. By the way... The remaining $20,000 is going to be used as child support. Do you understand? Your property is zero. Did you forget about the agreement? Seriously? What am I supposed to do? 
I'm broke. She didn't have enough money to start a business and she was limited on how much loan she can take out. So I borrowed $30,000 on her behalf. Even if her business doesn't succeed, I thought we still have $150,000 from you. So I thought I'd have no problem at all. But no. What should I do? I don't know. Don't ask me. I can't help you. Sarah, I'm sorry. My bad. I'll apologize as many times as I have to. I'll get down on my knees or whatever. So, can I pay the child support in installment? Please? Huh? Do you mean you'll pay them in installments later? So you want about $5,000 for now as a division of property? Yes. $5,000 or $3,000 is fine. I'm begging you. I'm having a harder time paying off the debt than I thought. Please, help me. Please, have mercy since we were a family. Huh? Don't be silly. Unlike me, she puts you first, right? Then shouldn't you tell about this to her first? I'm sorry I was so horrible to you at the time. I'm sorry. I was tricked by her. I'm sure you were. When she withdrew the money from my account, she changed her attitude and became cold. Now I lost contact with her. I was an idiot. I'm sorry. No matter how much you apologize, there's no way I can feel sorry for you. You deserve it. You said you couldn't trust me. Why should I do favors for someone who says things like that? I'm not that kind. You desired to take control and made the decision you wanted to make. You'll have to take the responsibility for your own actions until the end. Well then, bye. According to the story from his colleague, Daniel was too busy paying off his debts, so he gambled to get a lot of money. It was never going to work out, but as a result of further debts, I assume he had no choice. He quit his job and disappeared. He got what he deserved. On the other hand, I was dating a man who was introduced by my friend and he proposed to me. We are having a fun time talking about marriage preparations and buying an apartment. <laughs>